Today, we want to write down in general what the Taylor polynomial of degree n approximating a function near a point looks like. We're just going to extend our uh, equation of the tangent line to a polynomial of degree n. And because we just talked about power series and we're talking about polynomials, we're going to turn our Taylor polynomial into a Taylor series just by keeping going. We just keep going. So here are the things that we need. The Taylor polynomial of degree n approximating the function f of x near the point x equals a is given by. These are the elements that we want. The degree of our approximation, the function that we're approximating, and where we're basing our approximation. So our notation for this is going to be Pn, P sub n of x. And it will be the sum as i goes from 0 to n of Fn at a over n factorial times, oops, I wrote n and I need to write i. I'm already in Taylor series mode where we don't have a fixed degree that we're aiming for. We take the ith derivative at a over i factorial times x minus a to the i. So when we write the uh, superscript uh, index in parentheses, that's the ith derivative of a. Uh, the ith derivative of f at x equals a. Here's where we're going to be matching the derivatives. So the first thing we have is just the constant term, which is just the function evaluated at the point. The next term has the first derivative evaluated at the point times x minus a. Notice that the first two terms of the Taylor polynomial are the tangent line. The first two terms form the tangent line approximation. This is what we found yesterday, the tangent parabola, which doesn't make any sense, but we call it a tangent parabola because it's tangent. It's the parabola version of the tangent line. And then the third derivative, evaluated at a divided by three factorial, times x minus a cubed. And that's the structure of all the terms. We take the ith derivative evaluated at a divided by i factorial times x minus a to the i. So the nth degree term will be the nth derivative 
evaluated at A divided by N factorial times X minus A to the N. So we do want to notice that the first two terms of our Taylor polynomial uh, form the equation of the tangent line, the best linear approximation. So this polynomial will match the function in all of its derivatives at the point A. Notice that when we plug in A, if I do PN evaluated at A, all the terms except the constant term drop out. So note that at the beginning, we get, if I calculate PN, at A, I get F at A plus F prime at A times A minus A plus F double prime at A over two factorial times A minus A squared and so on. All these terms drop out and just leave behind F at A, which is what we want to happen. I want this polynomial to match the function in all of its derivatives when evaluated at A. If we find the derivative Pn prime, the constant term drops out and we have the derivative of F prime of A times X minus A, that's gonna leave behind F prime at A. That's our new constant term. In the x minus a squared term, the 2 cancels out the 2 factorial and gives us f double prime at a times x minus a to the first. The cubic term, the 3 cancels out the 3 factorial and leaves 2 factorial. So then I have the third derivative at a over two factorial, because the three cancels. I'm gonna write it out. The point of writing it out is to write it out. So the derivative of f of a is zero. The derivative of f prime of a times x minus a to the first is going to be 1 f prime at a times x minus a to the 0. The next term is going to have this constant f double prime at a over 2 factorial times 2 x minus a to the first. In the cubic term, I'll have this constant f triple prime at a over 3 factorial times 3 times x minus a squared. So what happens is that factorial is picking off the exponents when we multiply by the exponents when we take the derivative. So we just end up with f prime at a as a constant. Then the 2 cancels out the 2 factorial and leaves f double prime at a times x minus a to the first. And then the three cancels with three factorial and leaves behind two factorial. So just following this pattern, I'd have the fourth derivative at a over four factorial and then the four cancels the four factorial down to a three factorial. So the next term would look like the fourth derivative at A 
over three factorial times X minus A to the third. This is why we have that factorial and all these derivatives that we're trying to match up. We need to cancel out the exponent when it comes down as the derivative. But then when we calculate Pn prime at A, I get this constant, f prime at a, and then all the other terms zero out. I have this a minus a to the first, and a minus a squared, and so on. The process of taking the derivative of the x to the n is n x to the n minus one. The n also reduces the n factorial to an n minus one factorial. So we can see that this Taylor polynomial will match the function in all of its derivatives. And that's how we build Taylor polynomials. And it's the same way we built tangent lines. It's just tangent lines and keep going. Taylor polynomials means tangent lines that keep going to degree n. Taylor series is just keep going forever. So let's do an example. Let's extend an example that we looked at yesterday. Let's find the fourth degree Taylor polynomial approximating the natural log of x near x equals one. Sometimes I will say near x equals a, and sometimes I will say at x equals a. I think I was taught to use the word at, And then I went to this super pedantic phase where I said, well, the approximation really works near because at it's going to be exact. So if we're going to be, and then I was really annoyed by myself. And now I just interchange both words. It's kind of like the four. Sometimes I write the open four, sometimes I use the fantastic four. It's random. I don't actively think about randomizing it, it just happens randomly. If I started thinking about it, it wouldn't be random anymore. So what we need are, if I want to go up to the fourth degree, I'm going to need at least four derivatives. G of x is natural log of x. G prime of x 
is 1 over x, which I'm going to write as x to the negative 1, partially because I'm plugging in 1, and it's easier to take derivatives in this form. I need a second derivative. is going to be negative x to the negative 2. A third derivative will be 2x to the negative 3. And a fourth derivative will be negative 6x to the negative 4. If I want a fourth degree Taylor polynomial, I'm going to need at least four derivatives. Then we're going to need to, need to evaluate these derivatives at 1. The value of the function, I'm going to think, I think of this as the zeroth derivative. So I need g of 1. g of 1 is equal to the natural log of 1, which is 0. I need g prime of 1, which is going to be 1 to the negative 1 or 1. I need g double prime at 1, which is going to be minus 1 to the minus 2, negative 1. I need my triple prime. which is going to be 2 times 1 to the negative 3, or 2. And I need my fourth derivative at 1. So we noticed some things about this coefficient. This part of the coefficient, the derivative part of the coefficient, looks like it's going to be an alternating factorial. These are the numerators of the coefficients that go into Taylor's formula. So P4 of x, we'll start off with the value of the function, 0. Plus f prime, or g prime, which is 1 times x minus 1 to the first. The next factor is f double prime over 2 factorial times x minus a squared. The third degree term is f triple prime over 3 factorial times x minus a cubed. And the fourth degree term is the fourth derivative at a divided by 4 factorial times x minus a to the fourth. This could clearly stand some cleanup, because then we'll see the pattern which is always what we're going for if we can. If we can find a pattern, then we can stop doing all the freaking calculations and just write down it. So it looks like we're gonna have an x minus one minus a one half x minus 1 squared plus 2 over 3 factorial is 2 over 6, which is 1 third times x minus 1 to the third. Then negative 6 over 4 factorial. First of all, it's going to be negative. 4 factorial is 24. 6 over 24 is 1 fourth. Or more importantly, 6, fact six is 3 factorial, and 3 factorial over 4 factorial is just going to give us 1 fourth. So here's a fourth degree Taylor polynomial approximation. Because we have an eye toward looking to the future, thinking about Taylor series, 
we can see the pattern for the Taylor series approximating natural law of x near x equals one. We want to make sure that we identify the pattern. So the next term would be a plus one fifth times x minus one to the fifth, then minus one sixth x minus one to the sixth. So we want to make sure that we can identify any patterns that appear. This is why we want to simplify it. We think back into Calc 1, saying, I'll find the derivative with the chain rule, but don't bother simplifying it. I want that first pass because I don't want to see your simplified form. I want to see that you need the chain rule. I want to see the quotient rule all broken apart. This is to make it easier for your teacher to read. And it's sold to you as like, oh, hey, I'm going to take some of the burden off of you and not require you to simplify this work. And students like, oh, wow, the teacher is so nice. The teacher is just making it easier for them to read if you did the quotient rule correctly. It's just, it's selfish. It's, it's kind of both, both groups have the same goal. But here, our goal is not to plug things into the formula. Our goal is to look for the pattern. See if there's something that's going to happen over and over again. And we can just skip over. We also want to think to the future. What is this going to look like in general as we go from zero to infinity? What does it generally look like? Because it's a Taylor series, it's all going to have the form of powers of x minus one. It's the coefficients that's the interesting part. Notice that the co oops, notice that the coefficients are alternating and start off positive when x is equal to one. So I'm going to have a minus one to the n plus one. Notice that the denominator is very simple. If I call this minus one to the n plus uh, to the one, uh, this is going to be over one. Then it's over two and over three. So instead of being over a factorial, it's just over n. And we have an x minus one to the n. Notice that in we usually start our power series off at zero, but this one looks like it starts off at one. Also, remember, when we're thinking about Taylor series, when we're thinking about power series, we're going to think about what is the interval of convergence for this power series. Where is it valid to use this approximation? When we look at this approximation, I can see that the center is going to be at one. Of course, it's going to be okay there. That's where all the derivatives match. And then we look at the coefficients, think about how big we're going to get. And we notice that all we have in the coefficient for our power series is an alternating one over n. So it looks like we're going to get nothing to expand our normal interval of convergence. The convergence is going to be entirely based on the value of x. This is only giving us endpoints because this is rational or radical. So it looks like our center is going to be at 1. Our center is going to be at 1. 
Nothing is telling me to increase the radius beyond one. It's just all this, uh, all this x minus one to the end. So we're gonna go up to two and down to zero. We're gonna wanna think about the end point. At one of the end points, we're gonna have a one over n and a, a divergence. At the other end point, we'll have an alternating one over n, which will converge conditionally. So when n is equal to, uh, well, sorry, when x is equal to zero, we get a negative one to the n plus one times a negative one to the n, or a negative one to the two n plus one, and that's odd. And then when x is two, we get negative one to the, wait. All right, we're gonna get negative one to the two n plus one, which will always be, um, so since 2n plus 1, my words all of a sudden failed me. We're going to have negative 1 over n with divergence. We're going to get divergence at 0. At x equals 0, our series looks like negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n times 0 minus 1 to the n. So our series is negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative one to the n. So our series is negative one to the two n plus one over n. Negative one to the two n plus one is negative one being raised to an odd number. The important thing that happened here is that we had a negative one to the n and another negative one to the n. So I had a negative one to the two n. So at the zero end, we get the harmonic series, which is not alternating, and the series diverges. Zero is not included. At the other side with the two, our series is negative one to the n plus one over n times two minus one to the n and this one works out much simpler. We have negative one to the n plus one over n times one to the n, and this part is always equal to one. So we have the alternating harmonic series at this side. So two is included in our interval of convergence. So when we're building Taylor polynomials, we want to have it uh, keep our, our our eye on the future with Taylor series. And since we're dealing with Taylor series, that's a uh, Taylor series is a power series. We care about the interval of convergence, and it looks like this power series converges for x strictly greater than zero, but less than or equal to two. Let's take a look at a graph representation of what's going on. Didn't have decimals ready. So let's grab our favorite graphing calculator. Start off with the graph y equals natural log of x. We know what that looks like. And then let's start putting in our Taylor um, polynomial. The one that we're familiar with, y equals <clears throat> x minus one, that's the tangent line. We're familiar with the tangent line. Let's start adding some terms. Let's put in the uh, quadratic, y equals x minus one. There's our tangent line, but then we add the next term, which is minus one half times x minus one squared. 
there is our tangent quadratic. Now, if we zoom in, now they look very different going towards zero and going off towards infinity. But this is an approximation near one. At one, everything matches. At one, everything matches. The orange tangent line matches also in direction, matches the first grid. The green parabola matches <clears throat> in location, direction, and concavity. So if I start adding some more, y equals x minus 1 minus 1 half, x minus 1 squared. Now let's put on the cubic term plus 1 third x minus 1 to the third. There's the cubic. Now, once again, we see that near, uh, at one, everything is exactly the same. The further we get from one, the worse our approximation gets. Because we've already thought about the Taylor series, what's going to happen when we have an infinite number of terms? We know that uh, it's never going to match up near zero, but we're going to get conditional convergence at two. So what we're going to see are these ends just always never really getting closer to the function. And at this end, it's kind of like brrrr, because that's what conditional convergence looks like. Let's highlight this one. Let's look at that one. Oops, let's do this one. Let's shift this all one color. Let's throw on one more term here. So once again, we add a fourth degree term. And the, the fourth degree polynomial is even closer and it works over a wider interval. It's closer to our original oh, and it works over a wider interval. So if we zoom in near one, drop out our tangent line, our tangent quadratic, we can't even really see the difference from 0.4 to 1.4. The further we get out though, we start seeing more difference. We can also see that this is always going to be squeezed in from zero to two. more terms we add, the closer our approximation gets to the function, to the original function, and it's closer over a wider interval. This one, this particular Taylor series is stuck between zero and two. At zero, natural log has a vertical asymptote, and none of the polynomials will have that vertical asymptote. So it kind of makes sense that we got divergence on that end. 
on the other end, we keep alternating between an odd polynomial, which will go up towards infinity, and an even polynomial, which will go down towards negative infinity. And so that's kind of a visual representation of the conditional conversion we have on that side. Any questions? How's everybody? So before, when we went, uh, only went, so, um, I can't remember where we had stopped, but like between a 0.4 and 1.4, things were really close. But now, if I turn off some of these lower degree ones, we're getting a better approximation over a wider interval. And that's how Taylor Paul. Taylor polynomials and the Taylor series work. We get a better approximation over a wider interval subject to the interval of convergence. Because after two, this power series doesn't converge anymore. Any questions? Comment? All right, that's going to do it for today. Uh, we'll see you all on tomorrow. We'll talk more about what we can do with these Taylor series or Taylor polynomials. That's it for today. I'll see you all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day, and thanks for playing.